Hello everybody, um, I wanted to talk about uh, how to study the Earth uh, in terms of the electromagnetic spectrum um, and also look at some topics uh, on how to understand the Earth spiritually. So this is kind of a huge topic, um, there's just so much to talk about. So I've spent um, at least the past five years thinking about this topic. Um, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, kind of what, how this all started. Um, so basically, uh, I went to school, uh, university, um, University of Ill, uh, and I studied way too much. And then finally, I gave up on my education and started to think about uh, just studying the Earth uh, entirely. So um, I came across something very interesting. So this is going to load very slowly here because we're basically looking at about 100,000 earthquakes. But basically what happened is that uh, I started studying the Earth and I came across this guy right here, Antarctica. Um, and I noticed uh, my brother uh, works on neuroscience and I looked at the cross section of this and I said, man, that looks like a brain. Gosh, our Earth for sure has something very mysterious going on here, um, and I need to study this uh, very carefully. So I started to think about um, the Earth uh, being alive um, in different respect. Uh, and when I say alive, um, really, you know, there's probably something beyond uh, our life in terms of how we perceive the universe. So basically, um, it's alive in a very different sense, uh, connected to the entire solar system, the sun, a um, whole bunch of other things. So uh, what we're looking at here um, is basically a Google Earth map that I've loaded up and kind of uh, changed significantly to add temperature map and earthquakes. And I wanted to show um, basically what all is going on. Uh, but let's start uh, by talking about the electromagnetic spectrum. So I went to school for electrical engineering and actually I feel like I learned absolutely nothing about what I'm about to tell you. At the university I had to study most of this on my own. So uh, it's really strange because um, you know uh, the you, know, you study electricity and there's so many things um, that are just completely out of bounds uh, when you start to think about the astrophysics. Uh, what's going on in our universe and really, you know, this has helped me think about how to help people out and uh, It kind of it kind of makes me cry sometimes uh, because man um, I never thought that studying the universe would help at all um, I was just wanting to study computers and even spirituality how that would even help or benefit um, You know just helping people out so really what happened is that, um, you know, I studied electrical engineering, but um, in computer science and all these terrible things um, and kind of gave up on that and just said, hey, man, what's really important is studying Earth and just being a nice person and trying to help people out on um, computer stuff just wasn't really working. So uh, I also got uh, serious headaches and some stress and uh, some personal things that I want to talk about, but um, on the right side of my head. But anyway, so. Uh, but basically, um, what you need to know about in terms of the astrophysics is, yes, there is electricity. You probably are using it right now to watch this video, right? Um, but there's a bunch of different fields. And if you're interested in the spirituality of this, um, you know, there's basically the electric field, the magnetic field. They're, they run, all these fields run perpendicular to each other. So if you have a current running down a wire, like if there's a current uh like our planet is spinning any any object it was crazy to me i went to school and then some guy came up to me and said that any particle in the universe that moves anything that does anything uh has some kind of electromagnetic spectrum or field associated all you have to do is move the particle or even just its existence in outer space so uh, basically what happens is if, if something's moving this way, uh, you have a field that's a magnetic field and electric field that's perpendicular to the other field. So you could have an potentially, which isn't really talked about in astrophysics, is that, um, well, there could be a lot of different fields that we don't even know about. There's particles, new particles discovered. Um, I was not really going to mention this, but my grandfather uh, 
actually worked on the first particle accelerator on our planet. He helped build it, and it's an unbelievable task if you think about it. Um, there's, uh, you know, he studied physics, got his PhD, and then uh, traveled around the world, got sick of teaching in America, and actually started a university in another country. Um, and actually, no one in my family was born in the United States, so it's kind of very strange that everyone in my family. All my aunts and uncles, everything, they were all outside of the United States, um, prim primarily. Um, so, very mysterious. But uh, but going back to the electromagnetic spectrum, um, this is kind of a map uh, to get you started. I need, so sorry, I need to take a break uh, to talk about this. There's just so much to talk about, um, but I wanted to just talk about this quickly here. I, I know, I'm going to go through everything that we're going to discuss really quickly, um, just so you can see the extent of everything that we're going to talk about. Um, so here's all the electromagnetic field maps um, from NOAA. Um, here is the aurora on the North Pole and the South Pole that we're going to try to talk about. We're going to talk a little bit about sunspots and solar flares. Both, they happen on the north side of the sun and south side of the sun. That's why there's an image like this. So there's sunspots that we're going to try to look at. Um, we're going to try to talk a little bit about this video. This is a discussion of how the... Um, electromagnetic field works on the sun um, there's also tides and the moon so basically the earth uh, you know it's been said that if you understand the moon and the sun you can basically predict almost everything about what's going to happen on earth if you those are the primary objects that affect things um, here and the tide is super important so we're going to talk about the tide this is certain areas or the tide uh, affects earth mostly this is the time there's actually two high tides and two low tides every day very mysterious discussion you can see here's the moon kind of pulling the earth you can see the tide on this side of the earth and that side uh, little diagram there um, we're gonna and then there's also nautical maps because the tide the earth is 70% water and that's a mysterious thing for electromagnetic fields um, here is kind of showing uh, a little graph of how the tides work every day and you can see surface elevation actually does change quite a bit around the earth um, so and then here's kind of that solar wind question right so we're looking at the electromagnetic spectrum of the planet spirituality of what's going on um, it's just a huge topic like where are we going how do we leave this planet earth you know I tried to work on a moving company and I was just like man we are not getting off this planet in any kind of normal way it's going to be very interesting how we get to another planet or another galaxy or another solar system or whatever but here's kind of an example there's a van allen belt here there's a whole lot of complicated things that we can't even see so someone was sending me a message today and they were saying hey man I hope the light shines in you or something like that, but man, there's a whole part of the universe that is invisible that we cannot see that does not involve light at all. Um, in fact, a lot of astrophysics people argue that most of the universe is not accounted for. They can tell by that the, the speed at which the galaxy is rotating says that there must be more mass in the universe for the galaxy to be spinning that fast. This is some diagrams of the aurora. Um, Again, different side of the Earth. You can see where the aurora is common and some pictures. Sorry if I'm going through this too fast, but this is gravity anomalies. This is very important to discuss uh, in terms of how the electromagnetic fields work of our planet. Uh, it's super interesting to see areas that there is a lot of gravity anomalies. There's also hurricanes and the weather which is super important to think about. And I wanted to show you a quick image of that. So I made this up myself. There's actually weather patterns on our planet. So the winds, they call them the trade, you probably heard of the trade winds before, but there's westerlies as well, and then polar easterlies. So the polar, and they actually go different directions and it depends on different. Uh, so if you're 30 degrees, 60 degrees or 90 degrees, and this could actually happen on any planet or any star system, this, this kind of stuff that we're looking at right now applies to astrophysics all throughout the universe, which is kind of crazy because the more we understand about our planet, the more we understand about our solar system, other planets that we would may even never visit in this lifetime, but who knows spiritually if we can get off this planet. So this is some crazy stuff to talk about. There's also lightning maps 
Um, so the this is a lightning storm map. It's by this group here, and you can see all over the earth. This is a beautiful map, and you can kind of see there's certain directions and angles and all kinds of interesting things that happen on these lightning maps. Um, so it's a whole area of discussion. Man, is there a lot to talk about. So there's also my brother happened, my other brother, one of my brothers is a neuroscientist. So that's how we got into this discussion. Man, this looks like a brain happens to be on the pole, but my other brother's a geologist. And man, are the geology maps important and interesting. So you may want to take a look at this map uh, if you're interested in the geology. And I grabbed the KML data, which is for the Google Earth. And you can download that for 1.1 degree. That's the most detail you got. You have to select here and Google Earth to download that. I downloaded it for every single month to get those maps. Now, this is a windy map, so there's many different sources for this, which you definitely want to look at. The wind every day is super cool, um, but you can also select down here, um, which is the current, and a lot of people don't really think of that as important, but it is super important. The current, if you've ever tried sailing, these are very special currents that usually maintain that same path all year round and it's very mysterious and very interesting to think and the other thing is the cool thing about this one is you can do a 3d map and i am very interested in the pole so if you want to see the wind on the north pole um, and it takes so long to load because we're talking about thousands and thousands of data points right now and i'm really sorry it's loading slowly but you can see around antarctica if we are going to leave this planet spiritually someday go to heaven hopefully not hell, um, but it might be on the poles where the electromagnetic spectrum is actually doing something pretty mysterious and different. Um, you can download all those earthquakes that I'm gonna show you here from this website. And there is many different versions of the electromagnetic field that you can look at. Um, and I'm sorry if I have not shown the link correctly here, but you can download these different plates and I've downloaded them all here. I'm going to go through them super quickly um, just so you can see. This is the annual change uh, in inclination. So you have inclination, field intensity, uh, annual change is called a secular map. So you definitely want to look at a secular map. You have polar maps that are interesting to look at and the declination field again inclination field um, and declination secular change so man I'm sorry to go through this so quickly but I didn't want but basically you can download all those maps here you have D for declination F for force horizontal intensity inclination X Y and Z now these are actually the same as I recommend just sticking to the declination try to study what declination means uh, you can kind of see some details it basically means skew from east and west inclination is the amount in so if the compass that you have is kind of swaying in a little bit more in certain parts of the earth so basically the compass may actually pull into the earth more in some areas and push out in others so inclination is super interesting now declination is basically oops, sorry about that is left and right skew on that so it's super important to think of it in terms of a rate x y and z is not really cartesian coordinates we're actually on a sphere so it's kind of nice to do the inclination declination once you understand them uh, but this is the map that i usually rely on and you can change the base map you can also do poles here antarctica poles and those are super interesting as well so I hope I haven't gone through this all too fast, uh, but I wanted to just talk about it. Uh, I'm really excited to be able to have other people talk about this idea and work on it. There's so much detail. I probably will not be able to talk about all of this. So, uh, you know, at some point I'm going to go into the details and we can discuss it. But if there are specific things that you want to talk about, I'd be glad to talk to you about the details. So, uh, again, let's talk about the North Pole and how this can actually help us uh, spiritually and make better decisions about our lives, right? So, uh, man, there's so much to think about. Um, you know, the Aurora, interesting thing about the Aurora is that it actually creates uh, ozone. So, it splits the oxygen. Um, 
so it, it, it basically creates ozone in the atmosphere and actually the air tastes better on the North Pole and the South Pole but particularly on the North Pole so you can look at the ozone levels and there's actually maps uh, that are interesting to look at so the electromagnetic spectrum actually benefits us all a lot because of the ozone creates the sky makes it blue and things like that um, so um, but when we're thinking about how the earth works Antarctica is a very interesting thing because maybe uh, it's a key to understanding how all planets may work um, and even the Sun and other places you may want to look at the poles of a like for example Saturn has a very mysterious pole it's actually a uh, six-sided perfectly six-sided object which is totally out of bounds that it would be so perfectly shaped um, like that um, so the poles are actually super interesting on many planets and actually when we colonize the moon they are thinking about colonizing on the south pole of the moon I've looked at some diagrams of where they're thinking to colonize the moon and it may actually be on the South Pole because we can communicate uh, all the time uh, with Earth, right? Because if you're on the far side of the moon, you can't communicate even with radio waves because the moon does not spin, which is super strange as well, right? So um, now you can also see that um, there's connections with other parts of Earth. You have South Africa. Uh, Australia, New Zealand, and even South America, and there's a lot of other things to think about. And one day, um, you know, there's just some really interesting topics on the spiritual side that would be really awesome to discuss. So I was thinking, you know, man, maybe one day some of these islands on the North Pole may actually be spiritually connected to other planets in our solar system, and we may actually be able to have capitals on our planet earth that are connected to capitals of other planets in our solar system which is just out of bounds awesome to think about right so we have um, different different features of our planet that we definitely need to study um, and understand how we can work together so we don't have war and terrible problems in outer space like i don't even use certain words like Star Wars, right? I just try to not even, man, that's just a terrible movie. It's not going to be like that at all. Let's make sure of it. So basically, we want outer space to be really fun and really interesting and really spiritual, actually. There's a lot of things that we need to learn about how the Earth works spiritually, right? So if we're connected to other planets or the sun or the moon, we need to start thinking about that kind of stuff really carefully. So um, you know, part of the discussion that we're really missing from this is how the moon works with the planet, and that goes back to tides um, and a lot of solar storms and different details that we just need to understand. So, here is just an unbelievable amount of interesting information is on the sunspots. My dad named our property sunspot when we grew up. Um, at our house and it's kind of funny because these are solar flares and they're different on the North Pole and the South Pole of the Sun and you can see um, average daily sunspots do change and remember we've been around for billions of years so this is only a few hundred years of information um, and um, I wanted to talk about the geology really quick let me see if I can move over to the geology map here um, Yep, I think I can find it. Sorry about this. Um, yeah, so I'm going to load up the main Earth map here. So um, one thing that really encourages me is we have a lot of water on our planet, right? It's all salt water, but we do have a lot of water, and we have a lot of things that we really have not explored yet, right? So I'm just zooming in here so you can start to see the extent of all these earthquakes going on around our planet. And there's just so much cool stuff happening especially in south america you can see some major earthquakes here um, and just the beauty of what's going on uh, is really interesting um, and you can see in central america and the caribbean some really interesting earthquake activity and alaska it simply does not do it justice I, if you load all the earthquakes you can see a major bang 
huge earthquake right there, 9.0. Um, but just heading out into the ocean here. So, um, and then I have the, this is actually a temperature map and you can start to see uh, some interesting things. So uh, let me zoom out here um, because it's really hard to see how it's going on. So uh, don't assume things about the planet when you're studying, try to think very differently, especially when you're thinking spiritually about our planet, right? Like, so there is a strait right here and remember, the North Pole, the magnetic pole is not the same as the, uh, well, let me, sorry about this. <laughs> let me get back to this map here so you can see what's going on. So basically, the the North Pole, like if we move this on the Zerd Pole locations, it has been moving significantly a lot, right? So you can say the magnetic pole is not the same as the actual pole that we spin on, which is the perfect center of the pole. So there's a lot of things that we really do not know uh, when we're thinking about, like I said, um, how are we connected? What happens when we die? What happens when we're born? There's a lot of very interesting questions uh, that we need to have answers to and how we might even reincarnate into, uh, you know, go to heaven or other kinds of concepts like this, right? So uh, there's just a lot of really important questions um, that need to be answered. Um, and how we think about Earth, one of the things that I came up with, and I just want to talk about this um, uh, Briefly, is this idea of electromagnetic field reincarnate or uh, uh, reincarnation, right? So basically, the uh, aurora comes out on the North Pole and then it's pulled back by these gravity anomalies, which we discussed. The, the Earth itself pulls some of the fields back onto Earth. Let's see if we can get a diagram here showing that. I'm so uh, sorry about this. So basically, the earth is spinning and because it's spinning it creates an electromagnetic field that field some of it goes out into the universe and hits goes to the sun a lot of the aurora is created because of disconnection and reconnect it's basically a spark it's similar to lightning um, but it's uh, electromagnetic field related right so some of these fields actually loop back onto earth so this actually could cause reincarnation right so basically certain parts of our planet may pull the field back india is an example of that because it pulls the field very pointedly back so if you leave from the south pole or the north pole um, and there's a debate on positive and negativeness because uh the charged particles so actually the positive pole the negative and positive terminals of a battery are actually swapped when you're talking about the actual particles so the particles actually leave the south pole interestingly and come back up so when they pull back onto earth actually africa may be a part of that as well in terms of uh, flipping things back onto our planet so how we understand this and then also right we got all these earthquakes what is going on here right this is an insane number of earthquakes we're talking and i'm only looking at approximately five years uh, maybe 10 at most worth of earthquakes we're talking about a hundred thousand earthquakes plus and i filtered it to 2.0 plus and couldn't even get all the data because we had it was like a hundred thousand plus of just in a few years so uh you know this is not even all the data so um, and it's very difficult for me to even move around this map uh so the earth is definitely moving and there's definitely a lot going on now the uh, you might and that was just earthquakes that's not even talking about lightning right africa has very few earthquakes but a ton of lightning and same with america look at all this lightning that we have down in mississippi so there's just a huge question uh and also it's not totally certain like yes we get a lot more surface lightning here but the actual most lightning that we get on earth is actually down here in lake mirasiba there are so many different topics to talk about so i am just kind of um trying to get you as much information as possible because man it would be fun to talk about this spiritually and actually already we are starting to see some very mysterious things um we have 
eclipses that have happened near the North Pole and South Pole. We also had an eclipse within the last few years that happened right here in Singapore. And if you look at the information on this line here, you'll notice that this little declination field line went right through that same area as the eclipse. So there's a very mysterious connections happening um, and things that we need to think about. Um, I actually heard that they have tours, uh, spiritual tours on the North Pole and South Pole for the Aurora. They have houses um, and they're even burning churches down in some areas um, you know because they're thinking about really radical ideas spiritually um, past what they used to think about so there's a lot of um, very interesting ideas um, to collaborate with not only with Christianity but many other religions uh, looking at how the earth works right and so uh, I definitely encourage you not to say, oh, this religion is bad or this religion is completely wrong. Try to study and learn from what's going on. You know, we have a very mysterious case where we have, you know, potentially God that landed on planet Earth. Wow, <laughs> like completely impossible to improve, but man, maybe, right? So there's a lot of really interesting cases, but at the same time, there's other religions that say <laughs> different things. So. Uh, but uh, when you're looking at the Earth, definitely try to look through all these maps. Um, take a careful look. Um, <clears throat> now, like I said, there's <clears throat> they call these the secular variation. That means the change. So, uh, so what I'm saying is that basically, if the field moves a little bit in that area or the the uh, field intensity, then that would show a change in how much it changed. So the secular maps are actually super interesting. To think about um <clears throat> and it's very dangerous too you know i've i've uh, talked with people that uh, have uh one of my friends has a sensor and he uh is very careful to try to be careful in his apartment about uh you know wireless fields and all these things so even trying to study some of this stuff can be extremely dangerous because man you go to see the aurora what happens if you get cancer uh, from the radiation or different things, right? So there's certainly a lot of factors to think about, but <clears throat> definitely take a look at some of these maps. So we're gonna look through everything one last time really quickly. So here is the declination field maps, the Aurora 30 minute forecast to take a look at the sunspots. Um, definitely take a look at this. There's a cool video, um, really interesting to see. Here's some tides. So again, you know, we need to look at not only the spirituality of our planet, but how that's connected to the moon and the sun as well, right? And the tide maps are super important. You can see certain areas, definitely the tide is not the same everywhere on our planet. Um, and it changes throughout the day. So you can look at these maps that shows you the depth, low water map. And then here is another example again of how the tide is changing throughout the day and you can see a very mysterious spot here in the middle of the Pacific Ocean up in here moving around and wow that's interesting um so I wanted to also close on more of a hopeful note um that you know like you know I was once really worried uh, about things my brother took me to a um hot spring and I totally changed my life about earth I realized that the earth was shooting out hot water and it completely changed my mind about what's going on in our planet um, i just started to realize that the earth is producing this water and it was just amazing uh, to think about so uh and just you know i try to talk to the earth i've been talking to the earth for more than 10 years and to uh, god and to the universe i just try to spiritually think about as much as possible uh, as i'm doing my day-to-day -day life as i even walk around town i'm very careful about cracks and uh, just understanding the geology of our planet so there's so much uh, here these plates are get very confusing but they can be helpful because it's so complicated the map it can kind of really get you thinking um, and again you can download some of this data and then here's the inclination secular map so you can see how that remember we were talking about the uh, in or out of the planet uh, how the field changes a little bit and you can see definitely there's a spot right here on the jungle and another spot opposite side of the jungle going so one is one is in and the other is out um, and please double check on those details and then the field intensity is different throughout and you can see the field intensity being very strong on the south magnetic pole which is right there 
um, and then this is another field intensity total intensity change so this is a secular map showing where the field intensity has changed most so you can see it's changed right in here and here and one thing i wanted to mention man i don't even check the news anymore i hate listening to the news war all these terrible things going on man just check the uh, the uh, earthquake news or look at what the weather is doing um, so I try to not even let me show you one last weather map here uh, zoom zoom.earth is pretty good uh, for uh, weather maps you can get this load and it also shows the diagram showing the uh, actual pattern here and you can adjust it for the time and you also want to look at a pressure map which can be very helpful I'll just load this up really quickly so you can see uh, pressure does matter quite a lot uh, temperature and precipitation but there is also the windy.com uh, which I recommend as well um, but I do use the zoom one because it's got high definition and this and there's also a NASA worldview uh, which I definitely uh, worldview this is nasa worldview which i definitely recommend they have a whole bunch of other maps to take a look at the earth and you can go back many years and look at the weather and what i want to show you really quick here is the amount of pollution going on in asia it actually looks not too bad on those days but you can zoom back here and start to see what's going on it actually looks pretty good right now which is great news um but anyway so those are some of the maps uh, that you can look at uh, and I definitely recommend uh, taking a look at a lot of this information so I just wanted to close on a very sp on the obvious special note is that whatever kind of ideas you have <laughs> one thing I would say is you know I went to school for all this don't study this too seriously try to study things you know like coming up with these ideas about how things are connected to other planets I did not think about that logically I kind of just thought about it spiritually and came up with some very interesting ideas about how the planet works. So, you know, it does help to take a look. So use some logic and use some spirituality sense of when you're trying to study the planet. Um, and, uh, you know, just, you know, I, I've been super surprised. Certain discoveries that I've made have happened on full moons or new moons or interesting uh, weather, like all of a sudden rainstorms or huge. One day I walked outside and all of a sudden started hailing on me. And I was just like, oh my God, this is amazing. So there's been some very mysterious things that have happened to me personally. And I would say, um, you know, don't necessarily say, hey, something mysterious must happen to me for me to discover this, because sometimes we are not even aware of what's really going on. You know and just try to enjoy your life and have a good life and study earth and the universe you know and just uh be very friendly to everybody out there and good things will happen so uh you know there's so much to study all around our planet so uh you know and just uh try to look at uh try to look at what's going on um let me let's see if i can get this i'm sorry about this uh, yeah, so the geology map, I cannot emphasize how important this is. You know, different regions think differently. So, and, and the way that I think is not right. Okay, there's a lot of ways to look at how the wor Earth works. Um, you know, I just came across this very simple idea. Man, Antarctica looks like a brain. Man, let's start thinking about the Earth spiritually. Then came up with all these other ideas. So, it is really fun, but there is so much more. Um, we have not even started to begin to talk about some of the other ideas that I've been trying to work on. You know how, excuse me, how this is connected to the galaxy, how other planets are, are interconnected, if there's patterns. So there may be a, similar to we have like a thumbprint or a fingerprint, um, planets may actually have within the same galaxy, there may be similar uh, signs poles may you may have male female whatever kinds of planets there's all kinds of things that we need to study so uh, don't be afraid try to come up with a very fun idea about how everything works and man you know just try to try to think about it because there is some really cool stuff going on so i don't even live in a very extraordinary area you know i grew up in a pretty plain area in terms of you know how the earth works and there's people out there that for sure have some awesome ideas about how the earth works spiritually and i am for sure interested in talking with you 
and understanding what is going on on our planet. So I hope you've really had a fun time just thinking about how the earth works. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll just, I'll, I'll look at this unbelievable map. And there's just so much information here. Um, and it's just unbelievable. So I really hope you've had a fun time. Um, and please try to, you can add, there's so much to discuss. And I'm so thankful for the opportunity to even be able to begin to understand how our planet works spiritually. And I hope uh, that you have a really fun time. Uh, and let, please, uh, thank you so much. Have a great day. See you later.